So there's a, a cultural belief about young people that in the book I call the neurobiological incompetence model. And this is the idea that's become really popular that young people's brains are not fully developed. And of course we know they, they do develop over time, but there's a characterization that young people lack a prefrontal cortex. And because they lack a prefrontal cortex, they can't reason, they can't logically plan, and, the, and therefore their judgment decision making can't be trusted. There's a mismatch between the status and respect you feel ready for and what you're afforded by, uh, by your culture. So if we're not attuned to that, then we can end up doing things that cause the very frustrating, idiotic teenage behavior that we're complaining about. And we end up doing what I call grown splaining, which, and now I'm gonna mansplain grown splaining to you. <laughs> um, but it's the idea that, like, I, the smart adult with the fully formed prefrontal cortex, know what you should do. And if only I could say it to you clearly enough, then you would go along with what I'm saying. It's like the American who goes to another country and doesn't speak the language and just yells English louder at somebody else. Like that's most adults when they're grown splaining. I've read your book and, and one of the things that I love is that it, it looks at motivating young people through a scientific lens, but you also try to debunk some of the scientific myths. And one of those is that negative narrative that we have around adolescence, which you just spoke to um, in the neurobiological competence. And you say that that's really an obstacle to adopting the mentor mindset. So I want, let's flip that conversation tonight. Let's flip that narrative. So truly an adolescent brain is different than an adult brain, but that doesn't mean it's defective. It doesn't mean it has deficits. So why is the adolescent brain perfect for a young person at that stage in their life? Yeah, so the, it, in childhood, different regions of the brain each develop. There's a motor system, a language system, a object system. In adolescence, they get connected. And then they get connected in ways that are related to goals because the, in, for mammals, when puberty hits, you go from being someone taken care of by an adult, and a, a child is not evaluated with respect to how many resources they create for the tribe, right? So no one's like, this four-year-old didn't collect enough berries, get rid of this four-year-old. Um, but if you're a 16-year-old and you're sitting there like a lump on a log, Pretty soon, people are going to stop bringing you meat and protecting you from the other tribe. Um, and so you can think of like the brain start organizing around agentic behavior that is designed to be useful for the survival of the group. And often what that means is that it needs to be adaptive to whatever could have been changing about that culture. So maybe the, the patch of berries has been picked and you need a different way to get calories. Like a teenage brain's pretty good at coming up with new solutions when the rules have changed. I think they're, what, the risk taking that they do, that sometimes we all cringe when they do that, it's actually really necessary because if they don't take those risks, they won't be prepared for it. Oh, totally. And, and so Ron Dahl, who I interview in this book, is a well-known adolescent neuroscientist and I admire his work. What, what he always talks about is there are certain super positive developments for adolescents that are very risky like holding someone's hand for the first time. I mean, like remember that. That is terrifying. Like you, if you reach for someone's hand and they knock it away, you're, you feel like a pariah. You're like dead, socially dead the rest of your life. And, but if they take your hand, oh my God, like you have never felt so accepted as in that moment. And those are the stakes. If you never work up the courage to do that though, you might never have that feeling of acceptance and you might never learn what is the right time to reach for someone's hand or not. And then you, you could die alone. <laughs> One way to unlock motivation for young people is to help them understand that their brains are a work in progress. They're not fully formed, they can be developed. And therefore, if you're learning something new, like if you're learning algebra or you're learning a musical instrument, or you're in speech or debate, and it's hard. It doesn't mean you're dumb, right? Your brain is not a finished product. Your, your brain is an organ that is changing in response to the challenges it's facing in the environment, and therefore, the more you challenge it, the stronger that brain gets.